This is West Raynham, isolated, icy and deathly quiet. We will be based here at this former RAF base for seven long and cold January nights. This is night one of Most Haunted Live. Good evening and welcome to West Raynham, Norfolk, a former RAF base and this night is one of the first of seven nights, a long and challenging week for the most haunted live team, abandoned, isolated and at a location said to be riddled with paranormal activity. It is windswept, icy and snowbound. The conditions though of this former airbase, I would say are the least of the team's worries because this place is said to be riddled with paranormal activity and they're going to be exploring the buildings around this vast and abandoned aircraft hangar. We have 277 hectares of land over which has spread an enormous number of derelict buildings. There is a chapel, a former hospital, living accommodation, all kinds of buildings, once bustling, throbbing with activity, now completely abandoned and empty. This truly is the silent town. And when the team are out and about investigating, the only contact they will have with the outside world, because we are miles from any human habitation, will be via us here in the studio and with these terrible weather conditions shared by all of you at home there is a very real danger every chance in fact they may be cut off outside the hangar isolated on their own we've come a long way on most haunted live this is possibly our most ambitious investigation ever we want you to stay with us we need your help we need your input but now we need your absolute attention, particularly here, inside the studio, inside this vast and freezing hangar, because we are starting the investigation right here with a seance. Yvette Fielding and the team are in place. Absolute silence, please. Thank you very much, Paul. Can I please just ask the audience members if you could put your feet firmly flat on the floor? Um, we've already given protection um, I've said the words of protection, so if anybody feels uncomfortable at all, just put your hand up uh, and you'll be uh, taken to another area inside the hangar. Um, if you feel anything at all, if you see anything, if you hear anything, if you feel anything, then please, please put your hand up and Kieran will come to you and ask what it is that you're feeling or sensing. Okay, so, everybody ready? Happy? Feet around the legs of the chair. Okay. Fingers touching. Okay, let's concentrate. I'd also like to ask, please, if we can, can we turn all the lights off in the building now, please? Okay. <sighs> If there is anybody here, any spirit person here in this place, please can you come towards us now? Come towards the center of this table, the center of these people. Let us know of your presence. If there are any ghosts here, any spirits, men or women that used to work here, that died here, Please come towards us. Let us know of your presence. We don't mean you any harm. We only give you total respect. If there is anybody here, please make yourself known to us now. Anybody sitting with us now. Any person, touch them. Throw something. Make a noise with your voice. Please do something now to let us know that you are with us. Can you knock? Yeah, I did hear that. What? There's a breath, a definite breath then. Was there? Yeah. Between where? Well, I thought it came from there. But... 
Can you hear it now? No. We both heard it at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Are you sensing anybody here, Chris? Yeah, we've got a spirit coming through. At the moment, oh, I've not got a name or anything from it. Just had a lady here, felt like she something tickled her cheek. Okay. They're pushing her. Okay. Could that be what, what's coming yeah. through? Yeah. That's what's been happening. He's called himself Tav. Okay. Mm -hmm. he's, quite, he's quite a small guy. Um, he's a sort of ready blondie here. He was telling me he was an aircraft man. Mm -hmm. okay. What did he do with the aircraft? Did he fly it? Did he maintain it? He's also telling me that he's a man, if, he, if he's actually talking about us, he's saying if any need anything, he's a man to, that he's a man to see, if we, he's, he's a man that he would get anything for anybody. Right, okay. Yeah. We're talking 1940s. Okay. Oh yeah, the table started to shake. Yeah. Oh, there you go, the table's just... You can't sit at home, it's, you can feel it, the table is shaking a little bit. Can I just move my right leg? Yeah. So it's very close to the, yeah. the leg of the chair. It's only vibrating very, very mm. slightly, isn't it? Yeah. But it's definitely, ah, oh, it's definitely there. Please use your energy. If you worked here, if you worked on the aeroplanes, let us know, shake the table. Come on. Come towards us now. There we go. Can I just grab one of you, please? Come here. That's it. No, no, stand up. Come, come up. Put your hand on the table. Okay. Can you please move this table? Can you feel the vibration? Yeah. You can? What does it feel like? Does it feel... Oh, I always... Sly. You feel it slight? Mm. It feels sly. Slight. Oh, so it's a slight, yeah. Stopped. It's stopped. Move the table a lot more, please, if you can. Come on. Come on, move it if you can. Use your energy, use our energy. Is it still vibrating or am I Yes, no, it is. Can you feel it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. What do you make to that? I don't know. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I always describe it as a washing machine on spin. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sit down, mate. Thank you. If I whistle, can you copy me, please? <whistles> copy me, please. If there is a spirit here called Taff, if any of your friends are here, or any other spirit, please copy. <whistles> Good. Do you know, when you said that, I've, I, I know it will have cold breezes, but... To my right, it's just gone really cold, freezing cold. They're all gathering around us. It's cold. Mm. It's I mean, like it has gone colder, hasn't it? It has. It's, yeah. it's like it's a breeze cold coming cold. in. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a response. Come on, please make a noise now. Use your voice. Whistle if you can. <whistles> Copy me. I don't know if you heard that, it's a very faint whistling just above the table. So we've caught that. We have? Yeah. Good. Here we go again. Please make the whistling louder so we can all hear it. <whistles> Table's vibrating. It's like vibration on the... Is it the plane or is it the... It's a 
table's vibrating. It's like a vibrate. Can you all hear it at the front? Yeah. It's like the wall there at the back. It's, vib it's like a vibration. It's either that or the plane. Please do more, all of you. Come towards us now. Please use our energy. There are many of us here. Can you whistle again? And again, please. louder. Those back doors are vibrating ever so slightly. Could that could easily be the wind yeah. because it's a large surface area. All it takes is a little wind for it to cause okay. movement on those doors. <coughs> I'll ask, ask you to move the doors because we haven't heard that noise. No. In the back, have we? Can you move the doors, please? The big doors at the back. Can you move them, please? Can you push them? Oh, the table's going. Yeah. Come on. All right, Kat. See ya. We've got another one come forward now. Who's this? Okay. This one. He's, he's telling me it's. I don't know if I've got it the wrong way around, but his name's either Kaj, they call him Kaja, or his name's Kaja, and they call him Kaj. Right. This guy's a lot more important. Is he from the same time period? Yeah. Are these guys all no. nice? Mm -hmm. So far, th this one here is, is huge. Yeah. I mean, huge up the way and huge out of the way. Okay. And, come on. Yes. Give this, the mic to this lady. Do you want to explain what you've just experienced? We had a, a cold draft come from left to right twice. It came over, stopped, then went back again and came back. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, did anyone hear that? No, I didn't hear that. It's, it's interesting, even though it's cold, and the lady's just saying with, with, the, with the cold draft going, when it's so precise. It's, it's quite strange, isn't it? But it's strange, it's, it's when you've mentioned there is somebody else or they're here, they're, 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 there's a lot coming around. I, I'm getting a cold, it's always on my right side, and it's always when you've mentioned yeah. something is so here. There's, there's a lot yeah. of them around. Okay. This guy, this, I've got, got this guy, it's a fleet sergeant. A what? Fleet sergeant. A flight sergeant. Fleet sergeant. Can you describe what he looks like? To me, he looks about six foot five, six foot six. Um, very big bill. Um, age? It's hard to tell. Uh, age wise, it looks to me to be late twenties. It looks to me. Okay, so young. Uh, he's young. Right. He's young. Different to be special. It'd be so high up. Okay. Um, there. That's got to be the wind. Hmm. Okay. One last. One last try. I'm calling out to any spirits here in this place. Please come towards us now, make a very loud noise, whistle, use your voice, pick this table up if you can, slow your beings down if you can, slow your bodies down, slow it down as much as you can to try and communicate with us. Come on, come on. What was that? Did you hear it? What did you hear? It was a... Mmm. Just turn my neck. No. Did you hear it, huh? Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the first of seven nights of paranormal investigation from right here in the abandoned 
former RF base called West Raynham in Norfolk on an absolutely freezing night. We are very grateful to our studio audience here who have battled their way from all parts of the country to be with us and grateful for you for staying with us. We've just seen the investigation launched right here in the heart of the audience, a seance led by Yvette Fielding and the team. Some amazing results, stuff we're still analysing, and some very unusual sounds indeed. And a couple of the audience members have already spoken to me. One woman said she felt a burning sensation in her arm, and also a lady at the back who is psychically gifted, believes she's getting the name Ted coming through. Now the team don't know that, they can't hear what I'm saying. If either of those sensations are reinforced later on, remember we've already sensed that here in the audience. A lot underway tonight. Yvette and the team are now heading for tonight's location. Here's a bit more about the building they're investigating tonight. One of the base's most imposing structures is the ravaged control tower, which stands alone beside the deserted runway. The only signs of life now are wild birds that nest within the ruins of this once proud building. But even the birds don't linger for long, as what is simply a cold and unwelcoming building in the day turns into something far more sinister come sundown. During operations carried out here in World War II, 86 aircraft were tragically claimed, and it is rumoured that some of these brave, restless souls still roam the runway and control tower today. Built on ancient grounds, the ruinous structure is tied to a history which talks of witches, demons and other spirits once inhabited this land. Isolated and separated from the rest of the base, those that enter the control tower at nightfall should prepare for more than the chilling January gales and the pitch black darkness. This location represents a truly spine chilling and dangerous proposition for the most haunted investigation team. Will they last the night here, or will they run, driven away by the ghosts that still roam here? Fascinating night in prospect, and anything the team glean, anything they sense tonight can be researched instantly by our team of experts, a veteran of Most Haunted Live, historian John Callow, but also a new face, please make her welcome, Miriam Cook. Miriam, you're an archaeologist and a social historian. That's right. What's the potential for this site as an archaeologist? Well, it's great because this site, usually as an archaeologist, you go to a site and it's a tiny, minute portion of, in the, of, of the past. But here, we've actually got preserved buildings. They've been looked after really well because the site was working until 1994. So you can wander around after, I'm sure if you were here for a week wandering around, you'd probably start using shortcuts that they did in 1942, or having a crafty fag, maybe, in, a, in an alcove that was used before. So it, it's, it's nice to have um, buildings that are still standing and you can kind of get to grips with the people in the past that way. And as a social historian, this was of course a community, we're calling it the yes. silent town, but exactly. until 15 years ago this was a bustling community. Exactly, yes. And I mean there's lots of personal accounts of this place and very happy accounts as well of people that lived here, brought up their children, um, had good times here and of course there's the accounts that's, uh, of happenings at the site as well. And can I poke and pry a bit about you? What, what, what else have you done? Well, um, I'm an archaeologist. I've worked on lots of different sites here and abroad. Um, I'm also a specialist in environmental archaeology, which looks at uh, people in the past and their relationship with the environment and how the environment changed them, how they changed the environment, things like that. Fascinating. Let's hope we have a great night for you tonight and for John Callow, a historian. Great to see you again, John. Thank you. Now, um, people sometimes think as Norfolk is a bit cut off, mm -hmm. Norwich is maybe a more provincial city. Yeah. That wasn't always the case, was it? It's not now, of no. course, but Nor Norwich and Norfolk are vital to business that's, history. That's right. I mean, in the Middle Ages, we're looking at the major, if you think of agriculture as the predominant industry, in the Middle Ages, this was the area of the, the wealth of the country, and most of the population were based in, the, in this area. So wool was what was being exported, and this was on a major European uh, trade line to the Hanseatic ports. Now, of course, the boom town. And of course, vital around here in the Second World War, this was effectively the airfield for our fight against Germany. That's right. This, this is where Britain's freedom was really won. Thank you very much for that. Thank Great you. to see you again. Lovely to meet you, Miriam. And we want to hear from you at home. If you see or sense anything, you must please contact us. Here's Julian Clegg, Master of All Things Interactive, with details of how you can do exactly that. Julian.
Thank you, Paul. And as ever, these live shows have been nothing without you at home and you getting involved via our website and your text messages. So I want you to keep those coming and your websitings, your strange happenings at home. I'll tell you how you can do that in just a few moments' time. First, though, let's look at the interactive map, which is actually on the website. Let's have a look. This is where the webcams are tonight. Night one, the control tower, which is where we are. Webcam one, the fire station on the ground floor. Uh, webcam two, the corridor on the ground floor. Webcam three, there it is, in the control room itself. And then the fourth webcam tonight is in the office on the ground floor. So let's go through the webcams now. Let's bring them up. Webcam one, first of all. Uh, let's bring it up now. There it is, uh, the fire station on the ground floor. Already uh, sightings on that webcam. Dominic and Preston says, I've seen a man with no face holding what appears to be a body. Spooky. And Eddie from the Wirral says, a figure of a very broad squat man in the centre of the room walking up and down in an agitated state. Also, the name Martin will be significant tonight. Let's move on to webcam two, the corridor on the ground floor. You can see the crew getting ready for the investigation this evening. But before the crew appeared, sightings already from Olivia in Market Waiting at the end of the hallway. Uh, there's a figure. Also, I saw a black hooded figure walk in and out of the doorway, says Jody in Birmingham. And Suzanne from Shadwell Heath, a shadowy figure at the end of that corridor. Webcam 3, let's bring that one up now. Control room on the third floor. You can see it there. The chairs here and the tables too. Dan and Jay in Manchester, thank you for your message. We had a voice saying, help me on that webcam. And Jimmy from Shrewsbury uh, in the centre of the control table, I can see the outline of a figure that look, looks like it's got its earphones uh, on uh, and uh, interesting that and I heard the uh, sound of a bang and a crying sound says Reese in Henley and let's bring up webcam 4 the office on the ground floor there it is Martin from Leeds I saw two white shaped figures on camera 4 and Carol from Bolsove I keep seeing a figure of someone's Leeds I saw two white shaped figures on camera 4 and Carol from Bolsove, I keep seeing a figure of someone standing on that webcam. There's a member of the crew going through. That is not obviously. And there's another member there going through on that webcam. They're preparing for the vigil uh, tonight. Now, if you spot anything unusual, you can get in touch. You can text your sightings and messages to the word text, uh, then a space, and then you t text the number 80889. The text costs 50p plus one standard rate uh, message. Don't forget, you must be over 18 to get in touch. Uh, with uh, Most Haunted and of course I want to know who you are and where you're from so we can give you a, men a mention on air. Also you can send your pictures in uh, this time of Most Haunted Live. We're very excited about this. Send those to our web website mosthauntedlive.net. Uh, strange unusual pictures you've got of paranormal events or your Most Haunted gatherings as well so uh, keep those coming via the website. We may sh be showing some of those on screen uh, later in the show tonight. Now we've got a great competition on Most Haunted Live this time around. There are always great prizes. This time is no exception. Three lucky winners will win pairs of tickets to go on a ghost hunting experience, courtesy of Virgin Experience Days, plus a pair of tickets to the next Most Haunted Live event. Seven runners-up will also uh, get uh, tickets for the next Most Haunted Live in the UK event as well. So here's the all-important question. What was the name of the last Most Haunted Live event? Was it number one, Seven Sisters of Sin, two, Five Fickle Fingers of Fate, or three, Eight Faces of Evil? If you think you know, call right now. Here is the number 09012-933-666. That's 09129336666. Now the calls cost one pound from a BT landline. Other networks may be higher and from mobiles considerably higher. Over 18s can enter and remember to seek the bill payers permission before calling. The entries uh, close at midnight on Sunday the 24th of January. Entries made after closing time won't be counted but may still be charged and you can't enter I'm afraid if you're from the Republic of Ireland. For more details on the competition go to mosthauntedlive.net and uh, if you want to text me, just a reminder of that, uh, text uh, the word screen, then a space to 80889. It costs 50p plus one standard rate message. You must be over 18 to get in touch. And don't forget to say who you are and where you're from. And I'll leave you with some more messages. We're getting some great stories already coming in from people who worked here, who've been here. Uh, Tina and Steve from Derham say, my husband was a child on the base in the 70s. His father was a firefighter in the RAF and said the whole place was uh, creepy and he often used to scare himself when going past the hangars. Good luck to the team. And uh, Carol from Bury St Edmunds says, I lived there for three years until it closed. Uh, the team needs to investigate the bar area of the sergeant's mess. Very creepy there. There were cold spots, especially by the bar, and always a sense that you were being watched. Keep those messages coming. I love them. Uh, more from Interactive a bit later on. Paul, back to you.
Thank you, Julian. Well, we already have one audience member conducting her own mini vigil. We have four people in the audience monitoring the CCTV cameras at the location in and around tonight's vigil. And one man coordinates that for us and will be taking some other audience members out on a different investigation. He's here now, paranormal investigator Phil Wyman. Phil, great to see you again. Thank you, too. Phil, um, what do you think is the real challenge of this place? The scale must be quite intimidating for anybody who's hoping to investigate this even over a week. It is. I mean, um, we, we're having to obviously condense uh, what would be an immense operation to investigate this location because it is so big. And when you've got a location this big, that's where the problems start because where do, you, where do you start your investigation, what locations do you go to and that kind of thing. And that's the main issues that we've got. So we, hopefully we've, we've chosen the right areas to do the investigation out through the week. But the fascinating thing as well is we are here all week, so if something occurs, we can go back to that place. It's not a huge relocation, although it's a vast area. We can go back there during the day and investigate it further. Exactly. I mean, last um, live show we did, we might have had a problem doing exactly what you said because some of the locations were miles apart from each other. But if we do get something on this week's investigation, we can quickly go back to the location because it's all in the same area. And it's kind of back to basics because we are doing it as good old-fashioned ghost hunters. Yep. And what are you going to do with the audience tonight? Um, I'm going to take two members of the audience and go off to one of the locations where the crew are investigating. Hopefully they've stirred some, you know, some activity for us. Try seances, experiments, try and contact whatever might be there and hopefully it'll pay us a visit. Say hello. Thank you very much for the moment, Phil Wyman, Yvette Fielding and the team are at tonight's vigil location. They're about to begin their investigation. We're going straight there after this break. Keep watching Most Haunted Live for Silent Town. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the silent town. The town in question being the once bustling RAF in Raynham in Norfolk, now abandoned, derelict and absolutely freezing. Now we began the investigation tonight right here in this empty aircraft hangar. Abandoned, empty since 1994. We started with a seance, some very interesting results. Also some fascinating sensations from audience members. Three audience members have smelt quite clearly burning oil. Another audience member... Nicola has a cold hand, a very warm forearm, and then a cold upper arm. Phenomena we've noticed before. We're going to catch up with that a little later in the program. Right now, though, with the vet and the team at the scene of tonight's location, let's get straight over to her now. Can't see you. Okay, well, we're here inside um, one of the control towers um, on the RAF base. Um, and we've just walked in the door on the ground floor, and it really is an amazing location. I'm so excited to be here. Um, it's icy, icy, icy cold. Um, our faces are freezing, aren't they? It's yeah. that cold. Um, so, or I know you're just about to kick off, but literally just before we came on air, we, we all heard whistles from down this corridor. And, and Simon heard two huge bangs behind us. There's no one in the room. I've just heard, I was just about to say, I've just, we've just heard those two big bangs. I'm sorry, Dan, no, sorry. no, no, no. So let's go down this particular area. And um, we've got a few new faces. Bear, listen. Yeah, that was a whistle. Okay. There's a definite whistle there, Matt. Did you hear it? Where yeah. was it? Did you catch it? Yeah. Okay. Where was it? It's. I couldn't tell where it was from, but it was. A, it was. It was one. One sound. It was one. Yeah, it just can't do distant. it. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. the best way okay. of describing it. Thank you, whoever you are. Please, can you make the noise again? That was from upstairs. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is there somebody upstairs? There's no one upstairs. There's no. nobody upstairs at all. He's. Oh, what, what, what was that? Big bangs up there. Can I go double check? Should we check? Yeah, yeah again. To the bank. Carl, do you want to go and check? Where is that bank coming from? It sounds like it's coming from behind you, Chris. And again, Are you sure? Yeah, we're scared of the bloggers. Working feet up there, then. Quiet, one at, voice at a time. Okay, so we're in a very tight corridor, as you can see. There's a variety of different rooms off. And other guys are just checking out that banging noise is coming from. If you just come in this room here. So throughout the whole of this um, particular... Are you sure? Yeah, we're scared of the bloggers. Working feet up there, then. Shh, 
quiet, one at a voice at a time. Okay, so we're in a very tight corridor, as you can see. There's a variety of different rooms off. And other guys are just checking out that banging noise is coming from. If you just come in this room here. Okay. So throughout the whole of this um, particular building, the, the, the control tower, off the... Yeah. Yeah. Is it somebody walking on the floorboards? Yeah. It's really heavy with big boots on or something. There's only one. Can you please make the noise again? See, so bearing in mind Kieran and Colour up there, we'll have to ask them mm -hmm. that they purposely stamp up and mm -hmm. up and down. We can't be sure no. until they come down. When they come down and it does it again, then yeah. that's good. That's them walking. Yeah, and that's a different sort of yeah. sound, isn't it? Yeah. So while they're off doing that, mm -hmm. what impressions come to mind straight away? As soon as we walked in here, the, the first thing that struck me was how busy it was, really? the spirit activity. It's very much, um, as we walked in, there's a lot of spirit here, but the spirit are still going about their everyday work they did when they... Um, uh, again, I think we're looking at, at the wartime again. Now, you that, see, um, it's very interesting you said that, because mm -hmm. when we did... Um, we did, um, uh, Carl, do you remember Chris, the Winston uh, Churchill War Room, the, yes, the Cabinet yeah, War London. Rooms in London? We got in touch with, um, I, I believe to be a spirit, and mm -hmm. he told us that they were carrying on mm -hmm. the war effort mm -hmm. as if it was still, yeah. they still thought that the war was, was going on. Yeah. But they were very happy in their tasks, mm -hmm. and they were carrying on, mm -hmm. picking up the phone, marking things on boards, yeah. and so on. And that's, that's, that's what's happening that's here. That's the exact way we're unpacking up. So, so, so in your... We've just been upstairs to double check. Yeah. And what I can tell you, it's difficult to verify, but we know the dogs were through with security earlier on. We know there's nobody else in the building. But also, Carl made a point of stamping it on was, the floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, it's very solid flooring. So us walk. I don't know if you heard us just walking around. We heard you walking lightly, and then we heard the two big. Okay, so you bang, can bang. hear us, but yeah. we didn't find anybody, and we know security checked earlier on. Can I just verify? How many bangs did you hear? Two, two. Well, I slammed my foot down three times. Yeah. It was bang, bang, bang. Oh, right, no. The only reason is because I know we do one for no and two for yes, right. so we did three. Yeah. The bangs we had sounded to me. Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah. Make that noise again, please. And again. Bang again, please. There. There. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Right in front of you, Chris. <gasps> Can it, could it possibly be any of the, are there any doors that could be banging? With the wind blowing and stuff? No, there's one there room in the far end that has a... There's a tap. How many of you are here, please? Can you tap out how many of you are here? Please, the loud bang, the loud thumping there, please. How many of you are here? Do the little taps now. Mm -hmm. Can you make a heartbeat noise and heartbeat sound with the loud banging, please? The other thing we have to bear in mind is Carl and I only actually went up one floor. Mm -hmm. It could be Something quite a loud bang forward. from the upper floor. Mm -hmm. We'll check that out and bear it in mind. Yeah. Let's, do you sense anything in this particular room here? No, not in this exact Where room. are you sensing all this activity as, as, then? As we're walking in. As 
So we're walking in. There's a lot going on in here. There's a, a hell of a lot going on in here. When you say a hell of a lot going on in here, what? Are there people walking around? Are they working or sitting at desks? Yeah. Well, basically, basic what I'm getting in here, it's... I'm getting two sort of visions. The first one, when I walked in, the first one I seen, it was like one big desk. What's the matter? What's happened? Both of you, what's happened? Between a, Simon and I, there was a, a really strong breath. It was, it, was, it was a rasping breath, wasn't it? Yeah. It was it's 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 Yeah. You getting it, Matt? Yep. Yeah. Arch, if you can hear me, please, please, please replay it back. Oh my god, he's getting loud. I'm hearing it here, Ben. It's louder, it's louder. Tells you a response from it. I know. It's, cool. it's louder here, Carl, in the corner. Okay. How many of you are here with us now? Okay. Do you mean us harm? Two for yes, one for no. Stand still, please. Do you mean to scare us? It was very loud, wasn't it, from this point? Did you did you pick that? There it is again. Mm -hmm. oh. oh my God! Shh! Don't move. So now let's get the intelligence. Hugh, is anyone up there? Is it nothing? Sorry, I'm trying to check you. Can you hear my voice? If you can, tap twice. Do you know what that is? I'm sorry. It could be a door. It could be a door, but, the, but, but in my experience, I've said this before, if there is a menacing en a energy here, it will not respond to a controlled question. Right. It's almost like, we've had this before, haven't we, Chris? Yeah. I will answer and do what I want. Yeah. yeah. They are, listen. That's right, isn't it? You'll answer and do what you want to do when you want to do it. intense activity already and the investigation has only just begun we've yet even to switch to night vision that will happen after this break keep watching most haunted live the silent town Rasping breath, wasn't it? Yeah. It was oh, that's brilliant. That's regular. That's like oh, a yeah. You getting it, Matt? Yep. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live at RAF Raynham in Norfolk. A chilling and a very cold night indeed. But before we rejoin Yvette and the team, we have one lucky or perhaps not so lucky person to invite to join tonight's investigation. This is Most Haunted Live. We're at RAF Raynham, which is a massive site, 277 hectares, once a throbbing, bustling live community. 
abandoned since 1994. We are investigating this site for the rest of the week and one audience member is about to join the team and that person is from Essex, Sue Hearn. Where are you, Sue? Make yourself known, please. A personal assistant. She has come to the show with her husband who will remain with us in the audience and her favourite Most Haunted Live was from Denby in North Wales, the village of the damned. Well, as Sue joins the team, let's get straight back now to Yvette Fielding and the vigil team in the abandoned control tower here at RAF Raynham. As Sue joins the team, let's get straight back now to Yvette Fielding and the vigil team in the abandoned control tower here at RAF Raynham. Well, we're, we're still in the same position that we were in when we were hearing that low, dull, sort of bass, um, pounding noise. And we could hear it closest uh, here, coming from, which isn't the same noise at all. Um, Carl? I'm here. What's that? I'm here. Oh, I know. Listen. I Do you want me to go upstairs? Shh. Yeah. If I see a door, I'll slam it just to see. Okay. But I'll slam it three times. Check where this, where the equipment, what's above here, Carl? I will do, and I'll try and slam the door three times. To see okay. Can... What do you think is, is, is making that noise? Or who I, is making that noise? I don't know who, but I agree with you, it's, it's sinister, without a doubt. Um, I would like to go up yeah. and, and, and see if I can pick anything up when we're up there. Okay. What yeah. we're also going to do is there's another building very similar to this, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot older. Um, and myself and Kath, Chris, tap it. Or is that Carla Could be Carla Bullers. Oh, that's different. Go on, Bennett. Okay, that's not the same noise. <laughs> that's not the same noise. Okay, as I was saying, Kath, myself, Chris on camera, and Matt and Sam, we're going to go to a completely different building a little bit later on in the programme. Um, and that's going to be a little bit frightening, and you guys are going to stay in this building. Yeah. Let's walk on. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit, I don't want to leave here, but, you know, we've got to kind of investigate the whole building. Um, it's almost worth kind of leaving somebody here to see if the, the knocking noise yeah. starts again. I think if it starts again, I'll run back. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Stuart? There's a webcam there. Right, which we've webcam is that? We've just heard footsteps down there near the webcam. Okay. Guy, which yeah. webcam is this? What was that? What was Which webcam is that? What number is it? I just want to walk to now. Two. Right number two. two. Right, okay. Arch. Um, oh, what is that? It's a fuse of some description. Yeah. Do you know that that was it? Do you definitely know that that was it? It was there. It, it landed yeah. next to me. Okay, it landed next right me. next yep. to you. If okay. anything does get thrown, don't pick it don't up. Don't pick it up and leave it. Because we okay. can look on the thermal imaging and see sure whether thing. it's hot okay. or cold. This has just been thrown. And it uh, landed straight next, right next to Stuart. Whatever it was. Right down, well, either from down here on webcam 2, which, um, please, 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 anybody at home, did you see this fuse or whatever it was? fly across and, and hit Stuart and Kath. But it was at the it same time. Yeah, it was, it was right. at the same time, sorry, me and Kath heard footsteps down there and then that landed next to me and Kath. Right. Okay, well let's I let's roll it back. Yeah. Because yeah. I heard I did three bangs with the door. Did you we hear it? We heard it, it right? yeah. Yes. Different sound. I, I, I waited by that door and I just I just stood there. I heard just before the scream I heard a boom 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 boom. I thought, oh someone is up here and I waited for them to come towards me. Then I heard the scream. And then there's like three bangs upstairs, like doors slamming. There's no one there. There is there is no one there, and I just come downstairs. Well, there's no physical person there. There's nothing on that webcam. Well, me and Kath are in front. Not we, me and Kath are standing nothing here. Nothing on it. There's no person. There's no. What, what do you mean, sorry, guy? They, they, they checked that that second time on that yeah. uh, webcam. There's just nothing. Just empty frame. Not an empty frame at all, because me, me and Kath were standing right here. Well, so where's this there. come from? Were you too far back? Maybe it wouldn't no. be able to well, see. Let me just well, hang on, let's, let's test it. I was it. standing where Chris is, and Kath was there in that doorway. Right, hang on. So stay, stay there. Okay. Right, hang on, I'm going to throw yeah, this. Kath was here. Right, just a minute. Okay. Hang on, Chris, you move out of the way, darling. Danger. 
Come around me. So, can you see? Whoa. Can you see this? Well, you will do, can't, Chris. I can't see you now. Chris will see. Chris it. is going to see it, isn't he? But I'm just wondering. The Chris, web, what, yeah, can we just check on the there. webcam? Can you? Can the webcam see this move? Probably not. Could, probably well, not. Yeah, because it hit my foot. Right. Can we just check and see whether the webcam would have seen that? That's a, that's a real saying, no, they wouldn't have seen that. They would just not have seen that. that. Okay, fine. Okay, well, that's that covered then. Okay, no. Right, okay. Well, that's interesting. But you heard footsteps down here. Well, let's stand in the footsteps middle of this corner. Footsteps were down there, and then literally seconds later, that landed at the side of my foot. Okay, well, let's stay down here. Okay. Everybody stand still once we're settled. Stand still. Oh, here's, look, there's a fuse room. Fuse room? I don't know if that's what you call it. Is this where it w could have possibly come from? It looks as though it's the sort of place it would belong yeah. to, doesn't it? Yeah. Anything similar? I can't see anything. No. Okay. Right, let's stand still, everybody, and we'll do a quick call out, yes? Where's Kath? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Everybody keep your feet still. Please, can you make some more noises? The spirits in this place. You hearing it, Matt? Come closer to us. Make the tapping, the banging much louder, please. It's very gentle, isn't it? Okay. Whoa! Was that behind you, Carl? Huh? That was. Where was that? I don't know. It's that was like, that was a proper knuckle on a door. There was a noise. If, if it sounded like it would caught anything, Doc. Yeah. But did you hear that? That was a different... T we didn't hear it. Damn. It was a proper... We're all wearing gloves, but it was a proper... Yeah? It was a... I can't do it. Put your knuckle on there. Just... Just wrap. That's what it was, but lighter than that. Okay, everybody stand still. We'll ask again. Torches off. Please come towards us. Make yourselves known. We don't mean you any harm. Upstairs. I've just heard footsteps in this room. Have you? Which room? Thank you. Thank you. Where? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really? It was, it, was, it was almost like a... What was that noise? That's just some that banging, isn't it? Sorry. I definitely had footsteps. It was like a... It was like a... A real kind of... Oh. Yeah, Whatever, like, yeah. Yeah. Can you copy me? I'm going to whistle. I can't whistle. Can you, um, can you copy me, please? What was that? Someone just landed right by me. Don't touch it. I don't know what yeah. you're Oh, my God, I you heard right? that, cat. You all right? It's that. What? I heard it. I heard it. What was it? As soon as you'd left. Robin, was it something falling, it? or was it me stepping onto that? No, 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 something dropped. I heard it. Where was it, Robin? There's nothing here. Guys. There's no heat source. There's no heat source. Stu. <laughs> so, Carl, Stu, what's happened is we've just heard, and Robin heard it down here. Do you want to just get, get in? We, you both heard. Um, there's Robin there. Robin, you heard it, didn't you? Yeah, the metal crack noise. I got it as well. You heard it definitely. But there's nothing here. There's nothing to show what it was. And there's no heat source, there's nothing. Okay, let's reenact, go back into the room. Stay there, Kath. Stay there, Robin. I'll stay here. Torches off. Let me just get them. Yeah. Okay. Concentrate everyone. Please keep really, really still. All of 
of you come together now. All of you walk amongst us now here in this place. Touch our faces. Throw more things. Slam doors. Come towards us now if you can. Let us hear your voices. No, just a bit of sea. There's another spirit with us now. Is there? This one's, I'm pretty sure this is the one that's causing all the noises. Oh, really? Yep. The reason I'm saying that is because he's not communicating with me and he's not RAF. Oh. He's not RAF. This, this one's totally different to the other spirits that I've picked oh, up. Um, describing him. Thin man. Um, tall. He, he's wearing a, a long, it's black coat. Almost, it's not velvet, but that kind of yeah. material. Uh, I can't quite make out his head, um, but he's he's got some sort of hat in his head. I can't can't quite make out exactly what kind of hat he's wearing. But and as I say, he's not communicating with me. He's basically just walked in and he's staring at us all. Okay, so not for not RAF, no, a different this, time this, period. This is well before RAF. Oh really? Yep. This is well before that. Was that? that was definitely moment. Moment. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Who are you? Come on, frighten us, make us scream. He's pacing up and down. Is yeah. he? Pacing up and down. Not fast, very slow and sinister. Mm -hmm. Just up and down, up and down. How old is he? You can't see his face still. I can't see his face. Okay. She went to a different part. You don't want to sit outside, No, why? Okay. Why? Why? I just, I just I thought I saw somebody by the window. Not, not close, but it's almost like... A like a shadow by the window that moved away. Thank you. I'm glad you just said that. I didn't want to interrupt because just before you said that, there was a shadow here. You bet. It what? went light and then it went down. Really? So someone was walking across the inside and then it was calm and it went over. You can see, you can see, you can see the shadow. That, that's the studio there. That's yeah. where everyone else is. That's where the, the, the studio is. So you can see how far away we are. Let's... let's I find it absolutely fascinating the fact that Stuart sees something and you've you seen the shadow. I I think this is a this is this guy that Chris is talking about. Should we go to upstairs now? I agree. The other thing yeah. about me and Carl, you know when we, we heard something land on the floor like a stone yeah. or something, you will agree, Carl, won't you? We looked when you went into the corridor, where's it gone? That's it. Oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've not picked it up. What so, is it? Glass? I, I don't know. It's it's still a heat 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 slight heat source. Yeah. Slight heat source on there, yeah. But yeah, I think it's glass, isn't it? I'm not oh, sure. You, oh, it okay, you might be getting a reflection off that. Ah, okay, sorry. If it's glass. It, it is necessarily. It is glass. Is that ah, okay. Yeah. Let's go upstairs. Let's just move all slowly because stuff can still happen. Mm -hmm. Nice and slowly upstairs. Kathy, you okay? Yeah. Okay. So, shadows, the sensation of a presence, and also that object thrown, a fuse. Now, we have checked back on webcam two. Nothing was in shot that could have thrown that. Where it came from, we have no idea. So, please keep watching the webcams and contact us after this break. Back soon. I've heard footsteps down there and then that landed next to me and Kat. Whoa! Was that behind you? Carl? What? That was, where was that? I don't know. That was, like, that was a proper knuckle on a door. So it just landed right by you. Don't touch it. I don't know what you're saying. Oh my god, I you heard right? that, Kat. You alright? It's that. What? I heard it. Who are you? Who are you? Hello and welcome back on a very cold night indeed to Most Haunted Live, the silent town. The town in question being the formerly bustling 
very busy. RAF Rainham in Norfolk, now abandoned since 1994. A massive area, 277 hectares, and Yvette and the team have already started the first of seven nights of investigation, but we do need your help via Interactive. Julian Clegg is about to tell you how you can get in touch with us. Julian. Thanks, Paul. And some very interesting stories coming in about this base, and we're loving those. We'll come to, to those in just a few moments' time. Let's go through the webcams. Very busy, very active tonight. Webcam one, first of all, the fire station on the ground floor. Let's have a look at it now. Hannah and Angela in Stoke-on-Trent. We've just seen a dark figure of a person move from the bike back right-hand corner of the room. I spotted, says Riley, in County Dur Durham, uh, what looked like a tour server man in a white hat with a black band and white jacket and shirt standing at the window of this room. And I heard the sound of an old-fashioned phone ringing, says Karen in Wiltshire. Uh, webcam 2, let's look at that now. There's a figure at the end of the hall of a bad feeling about this place. Be careful, Carl. Webcam 3, the control room on the third floor. I keep seeing a man's face. He has a military uniform on, say Joey and Olivia in Chessent. And webcam 4, uh, at the office ground floor. There's something about this office that's got a really bad feeling about it. Something bad has happened there and something bad is going to happen there tonight as well. And uh, here's the story, just one example here. I was a corporal at uh, West Raynham in 1984, says Mike in Southport. I was uh, in the mechanical transport section. The hangar we used was haunted. Vehicles were locked in the hangar overnight, and I could hear the engines trying to start on their own. Uh, and the spirits uh, were seen in the hangar. Mike in Southport, Southport, great story. More of those coming through. We'll read more a little bit later on. But that's all from Interactive for the moment. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian. Well, we're getting reports of a lot of activity on the visual location. We're going to get back very quickly there after we catch up with our experts in History Corner, Miriam Cook and John Callow. Miriam, um, Chris sent something predating this RAF site. What might have been on this land before then? Well, I've been doing quite a bit of research in the area around here, and it's, it, it's rich in archaeological act, um, activity and evidence around here. You've got a series of Bronze Age round barrows to the north, and you've got some Neolithic finds to the south. You've got, uh, to, the, to the west of the site, you've got, actually got um, a medieval livestock market. Um, and then there's a missing deserted medieval village, which is quite interesting. And of course you get medieval villages often in the landscape because of the sudden visitation of the Black Death, which came to Norfolk in June 1349. And the thing about that is, I think, when we try and touch the past in the way we do on these live shows, we're very much looking at individual stories, the tales of the people and their surroundings. Now, if you looked at a nightly chronicle, the things written down by the elites, you'd never know the Black Death happened. It just doesn't appear, and it's through the kind of archaeology Miriam works in, that you actually touch back on those layers and see what happened to the people of the times. Thank you for the moment, guys. We're going straight back now to the vigil. A lot of activity. Yvette and the team have relocated, but they are still in the control tower here on RF Raynham. Back to you, Yvette. Back now to the vigil. A lot of activity. Yvette and the team have relocated, but they are still in the control tower here on RF Raynham. Back to you, Yvette. Okay, Very well, something really... I don't, have they just seen that, that um, guy, yeah, the, yeah. the, the footage? Because it would happen. Uh, they've got to say, right, okay, what's happened is Carl and Kieran are just walking down. You all right, Carl? Yeah, it's just, it's just Carl and myself. Just checking. Stuff. Okay, yeah. you're about to see a, 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 a bit of footage. Um, Chris is uh, looking at me on camera, and um, the next minute you hear a door slamming, and you hear Kath scream. Um, and uh, Mike, who's our rigger, actually saw this door which we don't see on camera, but you hear it slam very freely, very loudly in front of him, which is actually, as you can see, very difficult to slam. So have a look back at this clip now and uh, see what you think. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, look at this, you can't actually slam it! Wow. Okay, do it! Move it, try and move it! I mean, that was just... 
I mean, I didn't see it, but I no, heard it. I didn't it. see it, but there's footage of it. And, well, the footage of the reaction. We've got not just one eyewitness, a number of different eyewitnesses. And also, the key thing is that it seemed to move freely, which it doesn't seem to be doing now. So, Mike, just, just tell us, and everybody at home, you well, saw this stuff. What's up, Stu? Someone's just whispered something back here about... I don't know what, what they said, but I've just heard whispering right at the back of me. Was it male, female? What I couldn't it? tell you, sweetheart. I really couldn't, but I know it was human. It was whispering. It sounded like, say, Simon was at the back of me whispering to someone. OK. It's um, Sorry, Mike. So you saw this door freely slam in front of you? Yeah. As free as... Anything, yeah. And this is your first most haunted? Yeah, this and is my first. And what do you think to that? Is it your last? Well, I, um, my legs are a bit shaky, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit weird, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's quite hard. OK, and Kath, you saw the door as well move. I did. I was, I was stood at the side of it. Yeah. I was stood here. Yeah. And I saw this bit move. You saw it all move like that. Move, yeah. And Sue, you, you were our audience member. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Straight away, you've only been here a couple of minutes <laughs> and already a little bit of action. I bet you'd rather be on a sunny beach now, wouldn't you, having, having, having a barbecue sausage. No, I'm quite happy to be here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, you prefer this, I think. You're completely mad. <laughs> um, but you didn't see anything, but you saw Kath's reaction to yeah, the Yeah, and thing. I heard it go, obviously. OK. All right, so we've definitely got something here. You guys will keep checking, you and Carla checking, yeah. to make sure... We're that checking around. That the nobody else. We've, we've done a full sweep, literally, we, we came and went to, straight to the top of the stairs and I did the full, full once round here, there is nobody up here that shouldn't be. Okay, well let's go in this room here, okay. let's keep the door open, um, yeah. and there's another door in here, we can ask out for doors to slam and so on. Who do you think, Chris, is responsible for slamming the door, this, this, this tall this, gentleman? This guy that was talking about, the one that's dressed in black, um, still still can't see his face and th the more I think about it I think that this guy has got a lot of energy and I think it's he's not allowing me to see his face okay and which is quite quite sinister and it's not something I've came across before. well how weird is this we're in an RAF base you'd, you'd, you'd expect it to be full of lovely spirits of fabulous RAF uh, men and women yeah. and here we are with someone who's not RAF and who's quite sinister yeah, and, it's a, and it ties in with uh, what you were saying downstairs with the menacing sound, which is kind of in this area. because I heard it before we moved, before the cable was moving. But you could have heard, even though I've got this guy which is sort of dominating everything. <laughs> Stop. Torches off, guys. Okay. Hello? Torches off. Does anybody hear? There's a gentleman here who doesn't want to show his face. We're not frightened of you. Slam another door. Throw something else. Make a noise, please, sir, whoever you are. Come on, do something else. you show yourself, please? Show your face. Make a noise. What's you, Carl? Why are you on in here? Are we on you, Robin? Yeah. And then can I make a suggestion? Yeah. All the, sig all the significant stuff, the significant phenomena that's happened tonight so far, yeah. has all been things that have happened when we've least... Been expected. Yes. You haven't asked out for it. The no, door happened, happened when we were paying attention. The knocking. So maybe if we go about investigating, not so much calling out. Calling out. Good idea, Batman. Well, why don't we? There's a bigger space, isn't there? There's a bigger room. Should we go yeah, back, back into that back other room? Back into the other room. And okay. um, like you say, going about our business and see if anything else happens while we're okay. on our way. Yeah. yeah? That, um, that noise we just heard. Yeah. I've just been to the end there. We've got one of our other guys, Patrick, who's at, uh, at the end. 
There is no one gone anywhere near it, past it, and he didn't even hear the noise at that end, so... Right, okay. We can verify nothing's up there. Okay. Where's this big room? Big room is in here. Okay. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> You're right. Ah, so this is where the door that slammed was. Yes. So we're back this way. Cable's moving about. Yeah. Oh, moving about. There's nothing in this room. Why I'm going first. <laughs> it's a really eerie, yeah. eerie, creepy place. And for me it's quite... I've still got all the RAF people still going about their work. So they're going about They're their still... Work. And I think that's what you heard through there, was... What was the RAF guys doing that? Can I just get behind you so yeah. that if anything does happen in the corridor? That's the wind. It wasn't that. It was something completely different. Do you know what I think we should do now, Carl? I think myself, Kath, Chris and Matt should go off to the, um, the other control tower. Yeah, if you Do, would, do you yeah. think? And then you, so. you guys stay here because mm -hmm. we've got a separate camera and we'll go, we'll go off and do the do. Okay. But I suggest that um, you obviously stay here with night camera, night vision, and we'll just take a, a, a normal camera. Yeah, if you, you take the normal camera and be a normal spot, you normal spot light. you have torches? Uh, or? Uh, I think if we've got candles or stuff, that would be, be good because we can give you a, 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 a lighter. Okay. Keep the gun. I think that's all we've got for that. But just be I careful. Think it's really Wait. Eerie, creepy feel. Yeah. I didn't really mm -hmm. handle. But, but where yes. you're going, yeah. it's it's very dangerous. It's very derelict. And it's very old, and it's a lot more haunted than this place. So be very very careful. Well, I'll have Sorry, big guys. Yeah. It's it's basically the older of the two control towers. Okay. No one's Sorry? in the fire. No one's in the fire. Is that quite bright over there? What? Like the light's coming from the fireplace, from the. Uh, that's the fire station. Yeah, just there. And there's no lights in there. There's an infrared camera webcam in there. It's quite bright there. What you saw? What sort of light? You can see it's quite bright. There's no light in that room. It's bright. Oh, I see what you mean. There's no light shining in that room. It's... You don't think it's like a reflection? Could be. Could be? Yeah. Well, I, th I think you need to, you need to we get, need to get, get going. yourself ready. Yeah. I think you need to, to, to get your cap. Can, can, where's cap? So we're sent... Are you happy yeah. to do that, cap? Yeah. Okay. Right, brilliant. We'll, we'll, we'll hand back to... Um, I don't know whether we want... Do you want to, do you want to keep it going here while we Let's go off? back to Paul while we get your camera sorted. Yeah, so okay. Sure Paul's back to you in the studio. We're going to go off and get ready uh, in a building, another control tower, much, much older and apparently much more spookier than this one. So it's back to you in the studio. Thank you, okay, Yvette. You Stay safe out there. They are heading across the runway to the older and smaller control tower. That's just Kath and Yvette to conduct a candlelight investigation. The rest of the team will stay in the original control tower. Plenty of food for thought already. More paranormal morsels after this. Hello and welcome back to the massive but now abandoned site that used to be RAF Raynham in Norfolk on a very chilly night indeed. Freezing in fact. Yvette and the team are out at the control tower. Yvette and Katha have cut off from the main group now and heading across the runway for a candlelight investigation. Carl and the rest of the team are still at that original vigil location and we can go straight back there now in night vision. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, I think we need to, if we go through this corridor and back towards the end while we're waiting for the camera to come up with Yvette on it, okay. uh, to the other location, because we've heard a lot of bangs up this end, so I think we, we, haven't, can really, up here. we haven't really been into those rooms yet, have we, no. at the end? Just, just, be, along just the be really careful, guys, because this is... This is right. Okay. Just a kitchen, isn't it? What are you feeling, Chris? Are you, are you picking up anything at this end of the... Yes, we've still got this guy that was talking about the, the one with the, the, the long black coat. 
he's not showing me his face and I'm pretty sure now he's doing that on purpose and it's, it's very it, it's very sinister he's almost it's if his face so when you watch when you look in your reflection of water and some some parts that you just see it really wiggly and that's right. the way his face is it's almost as if he's not letting me and it's quite it's quite spooky to see it like that. So we just put and a fire over him so we don't Basically, I'll not show me his face, but what I can see is he's wearing some form of hat, but, but he's not RAF or anything, he's well below. So this is way before, before that? Yeah, right well before that. Does he, does he mean his harm? Yes, I. Without a doubt. Okay. Have we got no name? No name from him. No, he's not communicating with me. He's following us the full time. Come on, if you're here, make a sound. Slam a door. To slam that door again, Carl. Slam the same door that you slammed earlier, if that was you. Touch one of us. Did you say something? I thought, yeah. Did someone? I just did a whisper again. I, that, it, that's why I looked over there, because yeah. I just thought someone was... What did you hear? I just heard something whispering down, but I don't know what it is. Whereabouts? Let's go and have a look. Here, come on, we look. Sorry. Suit, do you want to go through? Hello? Was it this this way you heard it? This direction, yes. This direction. I couldn't tell I've got a first name, Carl. You've got know, a first name? I don't know if, if uh, how, how right it is, but the, the name that's sort of coming through to me is Luke. Luke. That, that's the that's name that's coming through to whistling, me. Whistling. Yep. Hold on. Can yeah, I come I through? Do you hear that? No, yeah. mm -hmm. Would that be Luke? Yeah. Is, is, mm -hmm. What is the whistling? Is that something that. Is that a way of them trying to just let us know they're here? Try or they're trying to come yeah, through? Try to communicate with us. It's Luke! Is that whistling? Mm hmm. Are we picking that up? And it's hard to pin down. Are we hundred percent sure it's not Listen, okay. the wind coming through the window? Okay. If that's you, Luke, can you stop whistling now? Can you start whistling now, Luke? Okay, well. That's controlled enough. Well, <laughs> can you stop whistling, Luke? We're not asking you to perform circus tricks for us. We just need to try and verify that it's coming from you, that this noise. Please, Luke, can you whistle for us once again? That is amazing. Come on. Yeah. Well, we can discount it being the wind. It's certainly it's not, not the wind. wind. <laughs> yeah. Luke, can you, can you move a door? Can you touch one of us? Oh. Hello darling, uh, yes I can hear you. How's it going on your end? Carl, Carl, can you hear me Carl? Yes Yvette, I can hear you. Can you hear me? How, how are you? How is it? What's going on? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good, good, good luck. Okay. With this person. Can you let me know when we're on air, yeah? You are on air right now. Okay. We're on air. I didn't know that. Oh, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> buildings at all so we send in security dogs and sniffer dogs just to check that there's nobody there um, okay and I should wait outside just to check nobody goes in okay so guy you're gonna stay out here yeah, yeah. we've got two security out here give us a wave Hello. Okay. and just the four of us are gonna go in right who wants to go in first you are we in normal vision now no right let's put, put normal vision on we need to light a candle on Come on inside then, we'll like to We're going on some more torches to go back to basics. Oh, no, 
might set yourself on fire. Right. I switched it back to night vision of that. No, turn it back. It's pitch, pitch black. Pitch black. What if you come in this bit here? Nothing. You can't see anything. Can't see all. anything. Okay. Okay. Oh, why did you let it go out? See us now. What's going on? You haven't got a torch. Kat, where's the candle? I mean, the, the, the lighter. I it. I was hiding. Sorry. Have a look. Sorry. Is this it then? Is this the building? Is there one upstairs? Is there one upstairs? Oh, what? what? Imagination. Okay, should we? Where's the dark, dark, dark room? What's in there? Can you see that? It's just the cupboard. So we know where we are now, and I've got my bearings exactly. I should go back. Yeah. Go backwards. I don't like this room. You don't like this room? Why? No, it's absolutely freezing. I feel like a lollipop. here in this place. Just kept moving, but before that, no, no, before that there was a noise. Hello? It doesn't feel right, does it? No. Where was that light? That light I just found it on the floor. Oh. Yeah. didn't think it was choosing. I don't know what you were doing then. Quite windy here, go out. Damn. Damn. I can't see a damn thing. Do you need to hold the camera? I can't see. I can 
and see. Bloody hell, come on! Yeah, we are. Is there anybody here in this place? Candle going, um, and uh, nothing so far. Uh, we thought we heard an, uh, a noise, but it was actually Guy, the, the uh, floor manager, coming in just to let us know that um, there was no, we couldn't go upstairs. Why is it doing? Sorry, I've lost you. Can you speak again? Everything's fine here. No paranormal activity yet. Okay, okay darling. Look, we're hearing uh, a distant. We're hearing like door slamming. Um, we've got Kieran pinpointed uh, pointed at one place. We've got other guys pointed all over the place. It's just in the distance, and we can't pinpoint where it's going. But it's certainly happening here. Well, can you ask for stuff to happen over here? Because so far, it's very quiet. Okay, we, we will. We will. We will ask now. Uh, I'll ask Chris now. So I'll ask Chris to, to see what would be the best thing. All right, Kathy. Yeah. Sorry, jumping there. To go across the Luke. Okay, yeah, yeah. Luke, can you please affect the girls? <coughs> I feel cold. So I don't mind you. Do this one doesn't feel too bad. Really? What about you, Matt? Uh, claustrophobic. You feel, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a because the girls are over there, if, would it be, I, I'm just saying, if, 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 if we ask specifically, say, can you touch mm -hmm. or can you, yeah. Do something. Maybe not even touch the head. No, not standard things that could happen to them physiologically yeah. because of the temperature. Can, but can you make a whistling stuff. sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that stuff. something here? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. This guy's got a lot of energy. Look. Yes. <laughs> Sue can hear whistling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That happened before when we were doing the seance, you know. I know I it know. was like, what is it, like a check? What's the matter? I kind of thought something was still behind you then. That's what you saw. You saw a shadow through there. Are you alright? Do you know, it was, it's almost like someone's pushing there like that. Pushing it on your, on my, on the throat. Your eyes? It was really weird. <coughs> you know, as it happened when we were doing the seance, I was really trying to I concentrate to stop it from doing that. You are right? Yeah. Fine, okay. Fine, so you saw this shadow through. You both saw it through here. Yeah. Don't go out, don't go out. 
square against this wall. Yeah. Yeah. Here, this one here, now like that. Here, yeah. in here. In there. To your left now. Me behind you. Fine now. <coughs> you feel alright? Yeah. Just in there. It's really weird. Why are you staying there? No, shut up. You'll hold the camera again. Yeah, I can hear you. Is everything okay? Yeah, we, we, we've asked them, this uh, this character um, to make uh, sounds and affect you guys. Is anything happening? Uh, yes, Kat's just had a um, feeling like something was pushing in on her, on her Adam's apple, making a choke. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're going to carry on here asking for stuff to happen, but we're going to carry on moving. Okay. Oh, and also, um, Matt and Kath both saw a shadow um, behind them in a different room against the wall. Okay, so Yvette, we've got his name. It's Luke Slater. Slater. His name is Luke Slater, and apparently he's powerful and he's nasty. Okay, Luke Slater, are you here? Luke Slater, come on, do your worst. You don't scare us. I'm not scared of you. I've got so much padding on, there's nothing you can do. Come on, love, Luke, or any other spirit here. Are there any nice spirits here? Push cat. Push cat. Deep booming. Bush cat. Look. Did you? What did you hear? Can you slam a door over there? Look. Do what you're doing for us. Look. <gasps> slam a door. Slam a door in front of cat. Affect cat. There was a deep booming noise here. Are you here? Is there anybody here at all? Any spirit person here with us now? What's More whistling. Yeah. Did you hear that, kid? You no, I just heard the murmuring. It's the murmuring. No. Affect the electricity. I know that's what I mean, but how cool would that be if all of a sudden the lights came on? Turn the lights on. Show your face at one of the windows. Touch one of us. Make a noise. <whistles> Copy me. Do you know that weird, horrible feeling that you get when... What? You know when something's like building and building and building? It's like anticipation. Yeah. Like something's going to happen. Really? You don't feel it? No, I'm concentrating so much on willing something to happen. I'm not relaxing into the the feel of it, if you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? I don't like there. Let's go in here. Eh? Candles, candles gone out, guys. Candles gone. What we decided to do, a lot of you were going, oh, why don't you take a torch? Yes, but we decided that we were going to go back to basics and just go with no torches and just... So Chris is the only one that's got... Um, light with the night vision camera, so we can't see a damn thing. I think we should stand in this corridor for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Straight ahead, Chris. Chris. Yes, straight ahead. That's. Oh. Major guiding her. I can't see. You are pushing her. No, I was guiding her. You come with Just to your right to touch. What? To your right. That's it. Through the door. That's it. Good thing, Matt.
Welcome back to RAF Raynham in Norfolk, the first of seven nights of paranormal investigation. Now the team splintered, they split in two. Yvette and Kath went over to another control tower, an older control tower, and what you just saw there occurred. Kath was subject to choking, and they both saw a shadow. Very strange. They were trying to investigate in a back-to-basics way with just a candle. They have now returned to the original control tower to rejoin Carl and the team. But we want to hear from you guys. What have you seen? What have you sensed? Let's find out the latest from Interactive and Julian Clegg. Julian. Thanks very much indeed, Paul. Now, we'll go through the webcams in just a moment. Also, how you can get in touch and send your pictures. That's new for Most Haunted Live in just a few moments' time. But let's go through our fantastic competition. Every time we have a live, we have great prizes. And this time round, it's no exception. Three pairs of lucky winners walking off with tickets to go for ghost, hunt ghost hunting experience with Virgin Experience Days and tickets to come to the next Most Haunted Live ghost, hunt ghost hunting experience with Virgin Experience Days and tickets to come to the next Most Haunted Live UK event. And seven runners up walking, up with, walking off with the tickets for the next Most Haunted Live UK event as well. So that's how it works. Here are the quest here's the question. Good luck. Uh, we want to know what was the title of the last Most Haunted Live event. Was it one, Seven Sisters of Sin, two, Five Fickle Fingers of Fate, or three, Eight Faces of Evil? If you think you know, pick up the phone and call this number, 09012-933-666. That's 09012-933-666. The calls cost one, P, uh, one pound, I should say, from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may be higher, and from mobiles will be considerably more. Only over 18s can enter, by the way, and get bill payers permission first as well. Entries close at midnight on Sunday the 24th of January. Entries made after closing time will not be counted, but may still be charged. And you can't enter if you live in the Republic of Ireland. More details on the competition, by the way, at mosthauntedlive.net. Now, let's uh, go through the webcams. Very busy tonight. Thank you very much indeed for your sightings. Fantastic. Webcam one, first of all, the fire station on the ground floor. There it is. Let's bring it up now. Billy from Gloucester, I saw what, like a, a male figure holding paper like a map on that webcam. And Chevy from Carmarthen uh, says, I saw a headless man holding a hat under his arm in a military uniform on that webcam, webcam one. Let's move on to webcam two. The corridor on the ground floor, there it is. Emma from Chelmsford, I can see a dark figure in a long jacket standing at the back of the corridor, looking straight at the, ca uh, the camera. And Jake from Apsley says there's a man running from side to side in that corridor as well. And uh, Thomas and Chorley says he heard a scream on that webcam, interestingly. Webcam three, the control room on the third floor. Steve from Bridgend, you can see the team there uh, getting ready and already sightings on that webcam before the team assembled. Uh, Steve says, I'm sure there's someone standing behind the table and chairs. Also, Miles from Hampshire, good evening, Miles. I keep seeing a tall man sitting down and standing up once again, looking out of the window. He's very restless. And moving on to webcam four, the office on the ground floor. There it is, uh, a black, muddy, large footprints. Uh, but nobody there on webcam four. Jordan in Southampton, thank you for that one. Now, your message is coming in, and uh, Dave from Stoke says you'll meet Taff. We've uh, all met him during our service time there. Uh, can you go to block 104 and try and uh, find a spirit by the name of Pete and ask him why? Just to answer the question that puzzled us for all those years when we were there. Uh, messages coming in about the base. We love those. Keep them coming. More to come a little bit later on for the moment. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julie. It's been a fascinating night so far. Extreme conditions out there, which has prompted, I'm afraid, some extreme language, for which, of course, we apologise. Now, I'm just being told the team has regrouped and moved towards the top of the original control tower, the nerve centre of this operation here at RAF Raynham in Norfolk. We're back with the team, and I hope you, after this. anything like it before now in 2010 the stakes are about to be raised every saturday night the series will be broadcast live for two hours unedited and completely uncensored most haunted the live series coming soon exclusive to living This time on Yvette and Carl, the team are having a photo shoot. We've got everyone here, Kath Howe, and we've got Kim and Keith, obviously got my bird. Carl then goes crazy in Cairo. 
Well, Yvette is working hard. That time when I was in America, car went off and bought a Porsche. So I'm going to go and get a horse. But everyone's home in time for Christmas. <laughs> Yvette and Carl's festive spirits. Next Saturday at 9, exclusive to Living. Hello and welcome back on a very wintry night indeed to Most Haunted Live, The Silent Town. We are live from RAF Raynham, a now disused, formerly immense RAF site in Norfolk. It is very cold and so far has been very scary indeed. Yvette Fielding and the team separated and went to two different control towers. They have now regrouped in the original and larger control tower where the vigil began and they moved to the top of that tower, the hub, the nerve centre. As the investigation continues, let's get straight back there now. back together now we've come right up to the very top of the control tower the first building that we were all in together um, and I have to say it's a very creepy building you can hear the wind really blowing up here lots of rattling of windows and and so on it, it, I, I, how, how does everybody feel how do you feel Carl I, I, about so far already tonight and, and gen about this gen place. generally the bill's been uh, progressive and and I, although it's eerie, I felt quite sort of on edge, but coming up here, there's a, just a, a different feeling completely. It's like you're being watched. It's like wherever you look, it's like there's people looking at you saying you shouldn't be in there. I'm on edge up here, I have to admit. Yes, I don't like it. Well, I'm actually quite scared, and I, and, I, and I will use those words, and the reason is because I saw that door earlier. Yeah. You know, I was next to Kath, and I saw the rigger there, and... I saw, I just saw just a bit of it, and that did it for me for the whole night. And that's put me on my tiptoes all night long, and you yeah. know, and I feel like that up here as well. Like Carl said, you know, it feels like you've got things watching you. So, yeah. <coughs> how do you feel, Matt? Um, quite vulnerable. Yeah. Same reason, Stu and Carl, like all the windows, and you feel like you're quite open to the elements as well. Chris, how do you feel? Um, the, the full night in general, I think it's been, for me, it's been a mix between good and evil because we've got all these RAF soldiers so all, the majority of them are decent people and then we've got this other, this Luke Slater who's the man's evil um, and up here as, as Carl was saying we've got a lot of RAF people up here and, and again that they're very much they're sitting at their controls and they're, they're, they're watching planes going by. So they're still and carrying they're on doing their jobs? Yep, yeah, still going through it. And do we know why this, <coughs> excuse me, do we know why this Slater is so evil? I don't. He's not. He's not communicating with me. So you um, still I, don't know. I actually picked right? his name up through the energy, so well, the, the, he's not actually told me the name. What's the walking down there? What's what is it? Just, no one out on the roof, have we? No, it's unsafe. People aren't allowed. That was security then. There won't be security out there, will there? There what are What did you see? Describe what you saw. Just somebody standing it, where this part is. <laughs> It's, yeah. it, it's, it was behind there, but, but we're doing that, and then back, that's why I just thought it was security, just checking on us. But she was okay, but they've gone like that, and gone. I'm well, just looking at Stuart, thinking, is it me going mad? I had to take a double look at that. I thought that was security, and that's why I didn't flag it up quickly. And that's where we heard that, that glass mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah, we heard some glass but earlier on when we were trying to get sort of ready for... Seance, so it's a glass smash, but we just thought where's the wind, so which it more than likely is. Okay, Stu, come sit Sorry, down. Sorry, yeah. There's yeah. definitely no one out there, is there? No. No, 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 no one's allowed out there. No, no, I don't really, I, as long as you're happy with it. Yeah, no, there's definitely no one okay. out there. Chris on camera, how do you feel? Um, I don't like this room because it's like a 360 view, but not giving us the advantage. It's like things are watching us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Simon? It's just really, really eerie up here, with all the windows rattling in the wind. It's just, it's a bit, bit on edge. Mike, how do you feel? I was just expecting something else to come out and attack me, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Okay, and, and Guy is new. How do you feel about being up here? I, I still feel quite excited, to be honest, but uh, it's, it's also just, um, yeah, it's, it, everything everyone's been saying, it's, it's very off-putting out here. It yeah. is, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. I feel a bit worried. Do you? Yeah. Oh. Nothing to worry about. You'll be all right. And Kieran, how are you feeling? Oh, I can answer for Kieran. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. 
Um, I do feel fine. We've had some interesting stuff happen already, and there is an atmosphere change up here. I'm worried how much of it is psychological, because we do feel very exposed to the elements. So we'll see how this goes. All right, everybody get ready, hands on the table. We have three um, items on the middle of the table. They are associated um, with the RAF. Um, they are associated with um, a, um, a item, something... Uh, Shall I say what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these these um, items here are from um, some safety um, equipment uh, um, uh, that was inside the survival. A, the survival kit inside a Lancaster bomber. The Lancaster bomber crashed. People died. And it's ironic that these water cans were the things that survived. Um, so we put them on the table to see if we can get anything from them as well. Okay. Everybody concentrate. Everybody imagine energy going through our hands, through your left hand into the person sitting on the left next to you, into their hand and so on, round and round the table. Imagine it's a bright white light flowing around the table in a big circle. Does anybody hear, please? Can you let yourselves be known? Please? Can you let yourselves be known? Any spirits that might be here in this place all come towards us now. Please stop what you're doing. If you can hear my voice, stop your work now. Stop your jobs now. Stop what you're doing. And look. Look at the people sat at this table. Come and talk to us now. Any spirits here that can see us or hear us. Any beings, please let us know that you are around us. Please. Any energies attached to these items on the table, let yourselves be known. Come towards us now, anybody here in this building, this control tower that saw so many things. Please come towards us. What's the matter, Carl? I'm sorry, I'm feeling really, I'm feeling so, I'm feeling really upset. Right. Just struck immense sorrow. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just trying to find out why, you know. If there's anybody here, please, any spirit people here, the people or the gentleman that was playing with us before, making noises, slamming doors, are you here? If you are, please do something in this area. Let yourself be known, please, sir. Uh, there's no vibration on the table, there's no mm. knocking noise. I'm going to take these off now. Yeah. Can you put them on the floor? I'm going to gentle with them. Okay. Carl, I'm just going to do something very odd. I'm putting this under your armpit. What's that? Just to make sure that he's not suffering from hypothermia. Oh, okay. Just to discount that. Okay. One hand on the table, one hand on the glass. One hand on the table, Carl. Does anybody here, please? Can you use the glass? Use this board. Spell out your name, please. Spell out your name. Let us know that you are here. What's that rumbling noise? What's the this, this, this isn't right. This is, this is all wrong this evening. What do you mean? It's all wrong. Uh, us sitting up here. It's freezing cold. It's blown a bloody gale. It's like, I don't know. It's almost like the top of this control tower is going to blow off in a minute. It's that windy. Do you know, I get the feeling we don't belong here either. I get the, not, not an evil way, but the feeling that we're interfering with people's work. And that's, that's, I think that's what a lot of people are picking up as well. Somebody speak here? No. No, there's nobody standing there, Cap. I really thought I heard somebody say. Did you? Okay, Cap. That's weird. What do you think? What are you feeling? Oh, uh, going to sit out? No, I'm not going to... It's, it, it's, not, it's nothing like... Okay. I'm, I'm not going to pass out, nothing like that. It's... I have got... I am filled with absolute... Sorry. It's sorrow. And I, I don't know whether... I'm trying to make sure... Because I've got such a lot of respect for all of these brave yeah. men and women that, 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 that died. I, I don't know whether it's that and I know where I am. <sighs> But then I've known that all day.
Welcome back to Bainham in Norfolk, the first of seven nights of fright on an absolutely bitter, wintry and snowy night. We've based ourselves here at an abandoned, now derelict RF station that covers 277 hectares and already for the first night it has been very busy indeed. Lots of noise, lots of activity, lots of strange technical problems and... We are returning now to the vigil in the control tower where Yvette Carr and the team are experiencing some very strange feelings. Straight back to them now. Okay. Um, Carl, you're feeling a little bit better now, aren't you? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Right. What we're going to do now is we're going to play in um, sort of some atmospheric, um, uh, what would you call it, sound effects. Recordings. Um, yeah. Recordings of the noises that would have been heard up here in the control tower, um, so voices from World War II, just to sort of see if we'll get any response um, from spirit if, you know, it's played out into the ether. So can we, can we hear that now, please? Can we hear that? Can you hear me? I repeat. Can you hear me? Ooh. I remember me too. Okay. Everybody put your hands together. Hands together. Concentrate now. It's changed already. Yes. Con tapping straight away under the table. You getting the tapping, Matt? Big time. Table shaking. Table is shaking. Go mad. Come on, guys. Please show yourself to us. We are here with the utmost respect for you. We are truly Stopped. here with respect. Table for stop you. now. Please do something. Crying. Smash one of these windows. I could cry right now. Don't cry. Keep the energy up. Please come towards us now. I swore there was movement behind me then. I saw some scratching on the table. I just heard scratching. I felt scratching. Come towards us now, please. Tapping under the table. It's getting louder, Matt. Under the table, darling. That's where you're at the way, Matt. It's right under, by, by my feet. I can, is anybody else feeling it? Yes, yes, <coughs> You yes, can feel, can feel it. The the what yes. is, it's Matt. <laughs> what is that? No, people. <coughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't you, Matt. No. It was not you. Oh, my God. It was what a was proper, it? like that. Yeah. It was like but a really no, loud, like, like a, road. yeah. That was, that was, keep it under there, keep it under there. Okay, keep going. Please, please. The men that worked up here, the women that worked up here, are you the spirits that are here now with us? Talk to us. You're picking that nap, tapping up. Okay. Please. How many of you? Is, how many of you are here now? Tap out. How many of you are here? Oh God, there's lots, isn't there, Matt? Yes, 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 yes. It's like a bloody train. Yeah. <gasps> oh, sure. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, please. All of you. All of you. All the spirits in this place. The men, the women, brave men and women. W would it be a good idea to, to just pull the track out now so we can actually hear the noise yes, better? Yes, absolutely. Could we pull that track out, please? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that's what was causing it. That was awful. I'm sorry can you hear to it? say. Can you hear it? There's the tapping. Okay, it's loud. It's underneath, 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 Matt. But it's, it's, it's... Um, what's that? Can you hear it, Matt? I've got anything now. Come on, come on. Right, shush. There we go. Yes. Right, shush. Okay. Okay. Did you work up here? Two for yes, one for no. How many was that, Matt? 
Can you get that? Can you hear it? Really faint. Okay. Okay. Should we try some Morse code, Kieran? Yep. Okay. There we go. Do you want to explain? Keep your hands together. Do you want to explain about the Morse code, Kieran? Yeah. I've got uh, a, a Morse code translator, essentially, and uh, typed into it a sentence, is there anybody there? and then I'm going to translate it. And so you'll get the light version of Morse code, but also you'll hear the beeping sound of Morse code. The idea being that if there is anybody here, they would have known what Morse code is and be able to respond. So I'll put that in the middle of the table. Slow ones. There's the three fast ones. And it was okay. three <coughs> and then three fast ones. <coughs> and then a break. And then three fast ones. Which is three fast ones, three slow ones, three fast ones. So right. dit dit dit. Oh. Dash dash what? dash. Oh, that's, that's SOS. That's SOS, yeah. Is it? Help me essentially, if isn't that's it? That's what it is. Oh no. Is it? If you want me to type anything else in there, okay. In let's. let's to that. Let, okay. What should we do? Um, we'll do you want us to? Well, no, do you want us to? Sa do you want us to save you? Okay. Do you? Want yeah, us? Yeah, no, but I just want to. It, it comes up with a yes. Save you. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. It's the same. Yes, it does. So it's SOS, SOS. thing over and over again. Yeah. And if, 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 Matt, if you're hearing it very low level, at least later on we can boost it up. Yes. And listen back yeah, to let's it. let's do that. Yeah. Let's put our fingers on the glass and see if we can, if they're saying save our souls, let's just see. One hand on the table, remember? I know it's freezing, guys. Mm, yeah, it's not that. I'm just... Okay. Who are you, please? Yes or no? Would you like us to help you now? Would you like us to help you now? Yes or no? Would you like us to help you now? Move the glass to either yes or no. Move the glass, fingers nice and light. Move the glass to either yes or no. I can't read it. I can't see what it is. It says D. D, go on. Join D and E. Continue. What's that? I'll see it. That's I or I. J. I. 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 Is it going to go to E? No. Oh, no. D what? Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sure, because oh, between, between B and C. C. Okay, ask uh, again, please. Bring it to the middle. Bring it to, oh. <coughs> oh. Oh. Why me? It's off. That was strong. K. S. K. What is it so far? Keep your fingers on it, guys. I can't remember. D, I, and then C, B, and then K. What's that gone to? H. H. H.
E. D I C K H E. Do you know what? It's sure that was an H, not an I. It could be Dicky. Dicky. <gasps> Is your name Dicky? Yes or no? Goodbye. <sighs> no, it's gone really cold. It has. Uh, it's it's I can't put my finger, finger on the glass. Oh. Shaking like what? Well, like, like, yeah, that sort of like that, that thick stuff. You just mm. you really can't yes. stop shaking. Yes. Yes. Is your name Dicky, please? If it is, yes or no? Yes or no? Please, we don't mean you any harm. Yes. Oh, okay. Can I, can I just ask? Oh, that is the name? Yeah, Dicky. Because it's also a slang word for something else. Oh, okay. All right. In, in is this your real name? Is this your real name? Yes or no? Don't know, can't see. Z. Zed? I don't know what that means. I mean... Okay. Dickie, is this your real name? Oh. It's so frustrating, I know, but the clock is ticking, the witching hour approaches, and we have to take the shortest of short breaks, but we will, I assure you, be straight back to the vigil after this. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, and the word tonight is freezing. The second word is frightening. We're absolutely live at RAF Raynham in Norfolk for the first of seven nights of paranormal investigation, and so far we have started with some amazing results. We'll be analysing during the day tomorrow and bring you the latest from 8 o'clock on our new show, Most Haunted Live Postmortem, on Living It, our sister channel, and then continue the investigation at nine right here on Living. And also, the investigation does not stop at midnight. Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, will be taking two members of the audience back to the old control tower where Yvette and Kath were earlier. And those people, and they don't know it yet, are Jessica Davis and Naomi Barrow from Stockport. They have beaten the show to be here. Jessica works in sales, Naomi is a student. Good luck to them, and we'll see their report with Phil Wyman tomorrow on Most Haunted Live Post Mortem. Now let's get straight back to the vigil in the larger and newer control tower right here at RF Raynham, where Yvette and the team are still investigating. Goodbye. No, we're not getting it right. He's getting frustrated with us. Dickie, please stick with us. We, 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 we can't, we, we don't understand your surname. Um, do it again for us. D A Y. Then what? Please. D A Y. Day. Ah, it's gone different now. F. F. Well, that doesn't make sense. No, no. D A Y F what? Stopped. Stopped. It did it again. It did, did that did, before. Yeah, it did. Maybe it's Dicky Day. Ooh, Ooh oh, that's Judah. Like that. Yes, that's your name, Dicky Day. Dicky Day. That's a very, very jolly name, isn't it? <laughs> Dicky Day. Is this chap English or? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh yes. yes, very yeah. English. How very dare you to even suggest that he's not? Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what make of? Uh, what make of plane uh, did you have? X what? Y Z Y Z. We went here first. It was Z Z X. What's the Z X? Spit, 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 no idea. It's not. Uh, Spitfire. There's Spitfire. No, that's what. That's what we found. Uh, you know, earlier when he saw yes. it, he went to Z X. Yes. Yeah. It just, okay. It's a type of Spitfire. Okay. okay. Give us something else to ask. You've got this. These all these words. Type of Spitfire. Okay. okay. 
Give us something else to ask. You've got this, these, all these words there, Kieran. Okay. Uh, did he die in the pulpit? Did you die in the pulpit? No. Oh, I know the next one to ask. Okay. Dickie, did he die in the office? Yes, that's cockpit. Okay. So he died in the cockpit. Uh, oh, blimey. Um, was he... Uh, okay. Go on, asked, Kieran. No, I was going to ask a control question. Go on, then. Uh, was he a bus driver? No. Ooh, that, no, hang on, because that was gone in between no and goodbye. Ask again. Were you a bus driver? Goodbye. Okay. That's a uh, slang for B-50... Was it a Lancaster or uh, B-50? Uh, just a bomber plane. A bomber plane. We I think for Spitfire pilot, he might have gone, no, hang on. Offended, I, I yeah. I told you I'm a Spitfire yes, pilot. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. No, on. absolutely yeah. right. Ask him if he's browned off. Are you browned off? Are you browned off, Dickie, with us? Yes, he is. Right, come on, guys, let's concentrate. Dickie, uh, we're really sorry. Please, please forgive, excuse forgive our us. ignorance. We're, we're not military people, um, uh, but we have the greatest respect for you. Does he need help? Dickie, do you need help? What's that? Fine. Oh, no. no, 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 it's fine. Okay. How about did he die here? Sorry? How about did he die here? Yeah. Dickie, did you did you die in this area? Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, Dickie, uh, we'd like you to ring the bell. Essentially, we'd like you to help us, and we'd like you to ring the bell. That's what we're here for, and that means giving us information. Can you please ring the bell? Yes. Right. Hang on, hang on. Here's a... Would, be a would, a, would each flight have a code? Each f each would flight? Have a code for his flight? Would he have a... Probably, oh, yes. Yeah. What? That's not banged since we've been in here, apart from now. Yeah, it has. It did at the beginning. It did. It did. Did it really? Yeah. That's true, Carl. There probably would have been, wouldn't there? Some sort of code? Well, each each each, each flight. flight that they did, they would have had a code name for it. Yeah. Can you, Dicky? Can you tell us the code name of the flights that you passed away and that you died in? Could you do that for us? What was the code name of it? Three. One. Five. Three one five. It went over here first. Somewhere, didn't it, it did. Yeah, it was um, here somewhere. All right. Well, three one nine five or three one five. Okay. okay, we can check that. Can you give us the date that you died, Dickie? The date that you passed away? You passed you passed over? The date that you died? The date. Six. Six. Fingers on cold. Six. That. Six. Six of the six. Or was it six? No, no. Six of the six. Six of the six. Can you, what year? Can you give us the year, Dicky? Forty. Three. Six of the six, 43, Dickie Day. So 315 or 319. 315 or 3195. Okay, just put your fingers on there. Sorry? Go on. How, How old was he? Yeah, good question. How old were you, Dickie, when you died, darling? Two. What's that? Six. Twenty-six. Okay. Were you married, Dicky? Were you married, darling? Yes. Are you with your are you with your wife now? Yes. Okay. Are you happy, Dicky? Yes. Okay. Are you are you happy for what you did? Actually not back to the other. I'm just gonna ask this quick question. How many how many planes did you shoot down? And how many Jerry's did you shoot?
Seven. Seven. Wow. Did he get a gong? Hmm? Did he ever get a gong? Did you ever get a gong? Goodbye. Frustrating that that very specific information is coming across now, right near the end of our first night of investigation. But let's catch up with our historians. That's Miriam Cook and John Callow. Miriam, you first, if I may. Now, Dickie Day, we can maybe work on overnight yeah, as a name. Yeah. But earlier we had a very specific name, Luke yeah, Slater. Yeah, Luke Slater. So we've been doing a bit of research on Slaters in the area, and we've, we've come up with a few. There's a Henry Slater in Great Ryberg in about 1625, and... I think then we've got a William Slater yeah. who was just down the road in 1601 and yeah. they, they clearly had money, they were yeoman families, they were, they were leaving Wales. Yeah, and so would that have been a common surname well, in this looks, area? There is quite a few in the area so it would seem to be a name that's quite common here, popular here. And of course through the course of this place being an operation as an RAF headquarters, as a base, there would have been thousands of servicemen and women through so we've got a lot of work to do to that's find right. Dickie Day who may have thrown a Spitfire. Yeah, the Spitfire, oh. the DX. So, yeah. Again, that was a very specific yeah, hit. Yeah, um, to Over the next few days, John, we're obviously going to be looking at the different levels of history here. Is there only one area in particular that intrigues you? Well, we're getting... Well, we've got this idea that we've, we're in a very stark place in the countryside. We've got somewhere, as Miriam was saying earlier, that has successive layers of archaeology, but also successive layers of military occupation from the Roman legions right up to the Second World War and the Cold War. So in a way, what really could be the gem of our story is the way that war and conflict have shaped and reshaped the landscape. Thank you for tonight. We'll see you both tomorrow. Let's catch up with you guys at home via Julian Clegg and Interactive. Thanks very much indeed, Paul. Just before we do what you've been seeing and hearing at home, let's just talk about the audience here, who as ever have experienced things on the lines. This always happens. Lorraine Williams in the audience can feel things touching her face. Uh, Joe in the audience can sense a waff who died of consumption, and that's why Kath was having difficulty breathing. Interesting. Thank you in the audience for that. And a lot of people saying they can see mist in part of the hangar as well. Interesting. Now let's go through the webcams and the themes of the night. Webcam one, the control tower. Let's have a look at it now. And uh, the themes of the night, the name James, figures moving around the door and lots of orb activity in this room. That's webcam one. Webcam two, bringing that one up now. That's the corridor on the ground floor. A headless figure. It was a trend of the night. Also a dark, misty figure. And the names Bob and John. Moving on to webcam three. The control tower on the third floor, there are the team there, you can see them in the vigil, we're going back to that shortly. Uh, the name Luke, he was hurt here, say many of you. Figure of a man looking out of the window and also a friendly figure called Godfrey, another trend of the night. And then moving on to webcam four, the office on the ground floor, there it is. Uh, a theme of the night, footsteps being heard, another trend tonight, figure stood in the doorway and small figures crouching in the corner. Other interesting coincidences of the evening, uh, lots of reports of burning sensations on the forearm, forearm experienced by someone in the audience, also from a former resident of the airbase, plus someone else watching at home, which is uh, interesting to get those kind of trends. Other themes of the night, the names Taff and Lily, several reports of a black dog, lo lost figures, not bad or evil, just lost. Uh, cigarette smoke seen and smelt by people who have been to the base and the sound of a typewriter or Morse code. Fascinating. More on that, I'm sure, to come tomorrow night. And I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts. Ashley from West Rainham, thank you for your message. I live near the base and used to cycle past it until I heard a man shouting orders. I looked around but couldn't see anybody. And here's another one. That, thank you very much indeed, Ashley, for that. Gary and Karen from Wimbledon say, My father used to be stationed at the RAF Rainham during the 60s. He remembers his friend seeing a figure of an airman that roamed the base at night in full combat uniform. Many more stories like that to come tomorrow night from all of us interact at Interactive. Thank you very much indeed. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian, and thanks to you at home for all your input tonight. Keep it going, please. Over the next six nights, we can go back for one final time tonight to Yvette Fielding, Carl, and the rest of the vigil team in that control tower. Okay, well, Carl and Stuart have actually gone downstairs um, and they're going to be on a webcam while we stay up here. Um, we've had some very, very interesting information given to us by um, a, a spirit, uh, an RAF pilot. Um, he died on the 6th of the 6th in 1943. That's correct. His name was Dickie Day. Um, yeah. Which is a, actually very a, a name that you would have, expect us? sort of, you know, here from that sort of time period, wouldn't you? Sort yeah. of it's, it's all sort of jolly hockey, hockey sticks, as it were. 
Okay, well, Carl and Stuart have actually gone downstairs, um, and they're going to be on a webcam while we stay up here. Um, we've had some very, very interesting information given to us by um, a, a spirit, uh, an RAF pilot. Um, he died on the 6th of the 6th in 1943. That's correct. His name was Dickie Day. Um, yeah. Which is a, actually very a, a name that you would you expect us? sort of, you know, here from that sort of time period, wouldn't you? So yeah. It's it's all sort of jolly ho ho hockey sticks, as it were. Um, and um, he sort of said that he flew Spitfire. Um, he died uh, in his aircraft. Um, gave us a number for the flight. Gave us a number for the flight, which I'm hoping that um, our historians can check out for us. Now we're just going to continue to ask just a few more questions. <laughs> Dicky, are you still with us now? Nothing. Can you feel the tapping under the table? Yeah, I guess. Yes, I thought I could. Yeah, I can feel Maybe it. Maybe he signed off. Can I ask any other any other person, any other person that might be with us now, if you'd like to come through, please? Thank you, Dicky. But if somebody else can come through, perhaps you can give us your name. Let us know that you're around. Please come through. Please come and talk to us. Somebody might need some help. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Somebody needs some help. And tell us your name, please. Tell us your name. No. That's normally quite ominous. Okay. Do you mean us harm? Do you mean us harm, please? Do you mean us harm, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you do something where we are or where Carl and Stuart is? Have you have we already met you this evening? Do we have we already met you? Okay. Do you disagree with what we're doing? But there's more cells up here. No. Okay. Is this something that you would have liked to have done? But worse, perhaps. Okay. Uh, who do you think this is, Chris? There you go. Well, that's that. One. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, I'm just um, I'm not kidding. It's 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 actually kicking off down big time. It, d d there's people walking around and there's no one here from oh. room to room. It's amazing. Do you want us to come down? I don't think you've got enough time, darling. Okay, you just keep reporting in. Crying out as we thought, it's banging all around us. Fantastic. Do you think the webcams can pick it up? Yeah, 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 we can hear it. Okay, we'll carry on here. Whoa, what was that? That was different sound. Yeah. It was that? up here too, wasn't it? Yeah. Come down the stairs. Chris? Sorry. Okay. He's not affecting him, is he? Are you affecting Carl and Stuart? Sorry. Are you messing with Carl and Stuart? The door has just slammed down here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. No, no, it's the boom, the boom. This is the first look slate of it. Okay. okay. Can you push Carl and Stuart? Can you push them? Push them. Physically push them. Can you do that? Okay, yes. Can you do it now? Can you do it now? Come on. Come on, play my game. Can Carl, Carl take talk back out of his ear if he's got it in? Carl, take your talk back out, darling, if you've got it in. 
We'll be back with Most Haunted Live post-mortem tomorrow night on Living It at 8 p.m. Apologies for any of the extreme language you may have heard tonight. Huge thanks to the team that have kicked us off in such amazing style. Our historians, Julian Kagan Interactive, but above all, Yvette Fielding, Carl Beattie, Kieran O'Keefe, and the rest of the team. See you tomorrow.